feminism, the debilitating disease now affecting around one in every six women. Take a good look. See the horrific effects it can have on the human body. Once attractive, gorgeous women men would be queuing up for, reduced to a sorry state, you wouldn't even fuck with someone else's dick. Feminism is transmitted from the mouth of those already afflicted with the disease into the ear of a potential carrier of the disease. Those of feeble-mindedness are easily infected. Feminism bypasses the normal functions of the brain, those functions related to proper reasoning and the acceptance of empirical evidence. Initial symptoms may include talking about the gender pay gap as if it's a real thing or overt use of the term patriarchy. Feminism, once inside the brain, can quickly turn a once friendly, happy, amiable woman into an aggressive, self-important bully bitch. Feminism also robs those infected with the ability to reason that people are naturally attracted to attractive people who smile when a camera is pointed at them and repulsed by repulsive people who pull a stupid face when a camera is pointed at them as if to believe that repulsiveness is something of a virtue when it's not. Feminism can also make some believe that having hairy underarms somehow makes you a better person. As feminism continues to eat the brain, sufferers find themselves engaging in a process of continued uglification, of which getting unflattering hairstyles, particularly the I was just run over with a lawnmower look. Apart from making you look like someone you wouldn't trust to have a child with, feminism can also serve to help make you look virtually unemployable. One even has to wonder if before feminism there were practical applications for words like bleh. In some severe cases, feminism can leave a woman virtually unrecognisable from her former self. One of the most common manifestations of feminism is hair loss. Even celebrities and high profile TV personalities aren't immune to the effects of feminist uglification. Of course, feminism will manifest contradictions in physical appearance. For example, making your hair look like an unwashed matted clump of rainbow spew, whilst still showing off a bit of nice cleavage. In feminism, like any other mental illness, there's always exceptions to the rule. Some feminists actually look like feminist problem glasses wearing freaks even before they were infected with feminism. It's also important to remember with feminism that what were once come-to-bed eyes can easily become go-to-bed eyes. One of the most tragic results of feminism can be an over-exaggerated sympathy for trans people. In this shot, we see a woman making herself look like a man trying to look like a woman. A secondary problem with becoming infected with feminism that's quite common is that they can also be easily infected with communism. Typically, feminists have trouble delineating between things that are and things that aren't, like bisexuality. Therefore, they view everything as being on a spectrum. Here we see a feminist on the blue to violet end of the uglification spectrum. Here we see a feminist who came to believe that smoking is much better for you than photography. Nose piercings, face tattoos and hair colourings that look like you dipped your head in radioactive waste are all part of the uglification process. Some feminists were so gorgeous to begin with that they couldn't make themselves ugly no matter how hard they tried. But this feminist isn't one of them. Feminism also causes metabolic changes to the brain's chemistry, resulting in weight gain. Feminism can also result in a horrible affliction known as Smurfism. In some cases, the uglification spectrum can even see the needle pushing into the ultraviolet range.
But the most severe symptom of being infected with feminism is that it makes what were once really attractive women think, talk, act and look madder than a cut snake.